Hello and welcome to the Blood Brothers podcast. Uh, tonight I am joined with, Sh- joined with, joined by, joined by Sean Coleman. Sean, how are you doing, bud? Um, pleasure to be joined with you. Excellent. <laughs> we are so slick. Uh, and you can hear him there. We are joined by a very, very special guest. Uh, it is the wonderful debut author of the brilliant A Good Day to Die. It's Armin Alonge. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me, Sean and Rob. Oh, thanks so yeah, much thanks for coming. Us. We're, we're buzzing to have you, mate. Um, we've got, uh, Chris sends his apologies. Um, his um, day job is insanely busy, as it always is. He's a teacher. Um, oh, and wow. Lots of parents' evening stuff going on at the minute, so he okay. sends his, his best wishes. But um, uh, but how are you today? Are you okay? I'm very good. I'm, I'm very good. It was a good day. It, it, was, it was fairly busy, my day job, but, you know, I sort of wrapped everything up, quite, you know, early enough to have dinner and, you know, I'm good. The baby's and, asleep. So, yeah, everything. And, and <laughs> everything uh, can I just say, um, listeners, certified cutest baby of the of the century award of goes to this much. child. Seriously. Thank you very much. Uh, oh, all to the wife, Shima. All of it. All of it. <laughs> all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh well, um, um, we were lucky enough uh, to um, cross paths uh, in Whitley Bay for the brilliant Bay yeah. Tales, weren't we, Amen? Um, yeah. And there was a moment during your fabulous panel with um, you were alongside Trevor Wood and Liv Kiernan, weren't you? Yes. I um, and uh, what a great panel it was! But at one point, uh, Vic and Simon, the organisers, took the went for full sympathy play and put the uh, the baby picture up on the screen in the auditorium. Oh, no. <laughs> I know, I know. You, you oh. have to get it where you can. You have <laughs> you know to, man. You have to. University does not come cheap, and we need to start exactly. saving early. This is it. Exactly. This is it. You know, he's start putting that work in pretty early. Let, let me be the cautionary tale of one in a master's degree and one in a bachelor's degree and without oh. any early planning because of forewarning of fees. Oh, oh, yeah, oh. it's it sort of changed, you know, by the time. Because when I when I when I went to uni, it was free, wasn't it? Yeah. Now, yeah. It's not. No, yeah. I mean, not. you know, we I was having that conversation about you know having to take out part of a grant or having to have part of a grant, and then you know we had I had a student loan of three hundred pounds when I left university. Wow. It was like the first year that student loans were incorporated it was the first yeah. year that you had to pay anything for anything, and yeah. you could get a bit of a student loan to. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I know. so you're just like you know by two years later you're like yeah finish paying that it's only because our um our 19 year old just got an email saying uh you might finish paying off your loans by the time you're 70 and she was like wow yeah this makes studying social work all the more useful <laughs> oh, <laughs> why didn't i go for a different degree with oh, a different man <laughs> Oh but you, whatever it was you did, though, Sean, I mean, you made a deal um, for the fountain of youth because you keep talking about the, the age of your children. And I know. There's no way you have a child that old. There's no you know, especially when you were yeah, talking I, about the dogs, we thought you were talking about little kids. No, my, <laughs> my, no. My, my eldest is 25, and then, yeah, and then we scale down from there. That is just, <laughs> man. Oh, on how is that? I am, on I'm very old. It's just good lighting. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god oh you know but you know what i was thinking was you know it's just something you don't think about till you have a kid but i was thinking maybe i can start like you know putting the work in for them to pull back the fees by the time he's like you know 18 19 you know like we, we can make it work you know what I mean? no, see, you start this start is lawyer out. thinking that's what i'm like whereas make that work I was you know, thinking, can... you know, how early can I get them into advertising? <laughs> how early can I, what can I charge for their services? Oh, oh I mean, thanks to pay tales. Um, I mean, your son is already involved in advertising. So. Oh, I know. Yeah, even if he was on my Twitter profile for a while holding the book. I know, I know. Like, yeah, well, I know. Speaking of the book, speaking of the book, a good day tonight. I mean, this, uh, listeners, whoa, this is a zinger. This is um, wallop. Uh, I I would run out of ex- um, superlative for how exciting this book is. Thank you. Um, and uh, I absolutely loved it. It's a breath of fresh air. Could you tell our listeners a little bit about it? Um, a good day today, it sort of focuses on a, on a sort of like no-name character. Well, we call him Pretty Boy. You can call him Pretty Boy. Not to his face, though. Um, he sort of like <laughs> returns to, to London after years on exile, a decade. 
for vengeance, but his return quickly sets off, you know, a chain of events that makes him the hunted as opposed to the hunter, but he would do anything possible to get his revenge or die trying. And that is a good day to die. Boom. Oh, <laughs> I, 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 and oh, I'm determined not to... Um, oh, can you hear that jangling? Can you, can you hear that jangling in the background? Uh, is no, that your guess, nerve? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it, it's my wife just opened the door and slid one of the dogs in because they're obviously misbehaving. But it's found oh, yeah, a, you can it's found a, a yeah. chew toy and it's oh. just like blanga, 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 blanga. No, we can hear it. So he's safe. Oh, that's okay. Safe. Cool. Safe. Be, do okay. behave over there, doggy. All right. <laughs> just don't. Um, this, yeah, the pacing of this book is frantic in all the Thank absolute you. best ways. Um, murder rate is frantic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. The kill rate is insane. <laughs> oh, it's fabulous. I mean, but I, oh, love, yeah. I love the apologetic nature of that. You know, like it's just, uh, this is um, a ride. I can't remember being this, just like purely entertained, you know, um, in such a while. Um, but right from the start, you know, this, the opening chapter yes. goes in with a. I mean, I, I, it was like one of those, whoa, you know, like really take your breath away moments and sets the stall out that um, nobody's safe. Um, yeah. You don't know what's coming. Um, expect the unexpected if you dare. Yeah. Um, I mean, was was all this, the pacing, the, 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 the excitement, was this all the plan from the very beginning? Um, I, you know, I think when I, when I originally had the idea, I sort of had it, you know, the same way it's always been in sort of like three three books, one that takes place in a day, uh, which is a good day to die. And, you know, I did, you know, I did want to have it that way. You know, you have to keep that pace going because it's a day, right? So you, and you have to, you know, so I spent a lot of time trying to make it as natural as possible. Yes, a lot of people die, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's frantic from the get go. But, you know, when you make the stakes that high from the jump, you sort of know that, okay, at any time, anybody could go back to the situation. So, yeah, it, it it was it was fun writing it, you know, and it was you know it was fun trying to make things work because you know the whole debate of you know do you plan and let your characters go? So I sort of planned, but then as you plan, some things happen. They're like, oh, well, that was awesome. Do you know what I mean? So you keep it, and then you so that you know it, it, you know so it, it was wonderful. I get, you know, I, I, you know when that that moment when I thought, okay, full stop, it's finished. It's like oh man, I liked it, which I, I suppose it's you know. You know is important but then i'm sure most people like their books and you never know if it's going to have any traction or if other people are going to like it but i liked it i really enjoyed it and i was very excited to get people to read it and then you know thankfully people like it so it's, it's just you know i enjoyed it i enjoyed it. i just finished this right in the second one and i really enjoyed writing that too so fingers crossed that you know nice. that is it's exciting so yeah but yeah, it's, yeah i think that sort of comes across though is that you know the pace. Uh, the pace is natural. So even though we say it's, it's fast paced, and you know there's not, it it doesn't at any point feel that that's forced, and that's because you're comfortable in the skin of the of the book and the world that you were creating, and so you you can really feel that sort of assured. And for a debut as well, let's say you feel that assured pace of it going. Yeah, I think this is. This is right. This is still feasible. Let's go. This is still yeah, right. You, characters are I, speaking. They're getting, you know, and it's you could really feel that um, the characters were speaking to you. Thank you very much. Mm. I, I, I think love, feasibility is uh, sorry, sorry, feasibility is, is very important to me because you know, I, you know, that's my biggest gripe. You know, when you're watching television, you, you're like, that doesn't make sense. That wouldn't work. And, you know, and I wanted to keep that to the minimum while also keeping the action and the excitement and the unexpectedness to, you know, you want it to be shocking and unexpected, but also when you look back on it, like, yeah, in this world, this is possible. Do you know what I mean? This yeah. could happen, not just an outlandish twist or a shock just for the sake of it. You know, and I really tried to make it. I guess I inhabited, you know, I think this is a different thing, you know, when people write their first novels, I find, because this word has been in my head for a while. So I was able to develop it and develop it and develop it. You know, I'm sure the, the first one I wrote, the first idea I probably had in my head was, you know, I don't even know. <laughs> Thank God I didn't write that one. But yeah, you know, it's, it, it grows in your head. You, you grow with the characters. You even, I even spend months only focusing on one of the very peripheral characters and they become very real in my head. And that way, everything they do sort of flows anyway. So, yeah. Wow, that, that's really, so how, 
long did it sit in your head before anything was committed to paper? Or were you um, jotting down thoughts and 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 then character notes as you went? Yeah, yeah. My my the, the notes on my iPhone are absolutely incredible with that. Even like things that I incriminating. <laughs> yeah, even things that I, I I wouldn't get because I have other ideas and so on my notes are just like you know just a whole like I don't know how long it is about one particular character and a book that you know I haven't even dreamed of selling. So that's sort of how it was for years. You know what I mean? Just like, oh, you know, just, and you just keep feeding the story, keep feeding the story without writing it. But I always knew, okay, when I do have that time between my LPC, because I knew I was going to have a year off between doing the LPC and then going straight to my training contract. I was like, I'm going to have a year off there. So I just made sure I had everything ready to sit down. You know, I knew all the characters, I knew, you know, and I was so ready to just put it out and just make it as good as possible so in terms of like gestation period in my head it was a while I, I don't even know exactly when the original idea came up but the story has been in there for this to be fair this and another story that I wanted to I didn't know which one to pick to write but thankfully I picked the one I picked this one so yeah yeah I mean thankfully you did because bloody hell yeah. Yeah, as a reader, I'm grateful. <laughs> it's grateful, man. <laughs> oh. But it's just, it's re- I think it's really fascinating that, um, you know, you have, like I have, a, a, the, the thing that I'm working on at the moment is something that has been with me for, um, I, I'd give it a good sort of 10, 12 years. It's just never been the right time to come to it. And I've now been working on it for about a year in and around the day job and everything else. But um, it hasn't gone away. Like it just keeps knocking and then, you know, yeah. there's other ideas that have come up and you can knock them out quite quickly. Um, and they aren't, I, I guess they're just not as painful. Um, they're not as deeply touched. <laughs> so, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, you know I, I, I mean? yeah, I know exactly what you mean. And, and, and that's it, right? You know, because even while I was having those ideas, others were coming up and I was like, nah, or you just forget them. Yes. You know, like, you know, I, I was scrolling through my notes the other day trying to find a password or something. And I saw an idea I wrote down. I'm like, oh, OK. Hmm. And it just moved on. So, you know, like, <laughs> like you're, 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 nothing is happening to you. You're going to stay there forever. <laughs> you know, they, you're well, you button. never know. There might be a time when that idea comes knocking, you know. Exactly. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. I, I find that good when, um, you know, if, if you ever get an invitation to write a short story. And um, I, I'm like, I got some little things that might kick off a little oh, something some way, okay, you know. Okay, so okay. I, I, I do have a note similar. It's not as great as that. It's a lot more hodgepodge yeah. de- than what you're describing. But yeah, I got something similar. Also with articles, you know, like if you're, because we sometimes, as much as I would never want to accidentally click on a, uh, you know, to click on a, a clickbaity article, like, you will not believe how this person, you know, yeah, perished. Right. Or something. You know, like sometimes you're like, well, I'm a crime writer. I should probably click. Yeah, I should probably, yeah, <laughs> right. It's probably fine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's why you're getting the that clickbait. Not you will not believe how she lost weight, or you. Oh yeah, that's probably. Like, <laughs> yeah, you know that your search history has determined how many oh, how really? different people oh. die means that you will get. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, mean, yeah. anyway. I went through a phase. I don't know if you know this American show it's called The First Forty Eight. Yeah, oh, no, I don't know. You, yeah, it's sort of like the first 48 hours of after a murder. And it's like, you know, it's really, you know, it's, it's not sensationalized at all. You know, oh, the detectives wow. are it's overweight. Very... You know what I mean? They're, and they're really good at their jobs and they're really good at the stories. And, and that was very good for me. Just, 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 just watching it, just seeing the motives, just, you know, just seeing how detectives work and what sort of leads to a crime. Because none of these crimes are really fantastic, you know what I mean? It's just something really stupid or something really obvious, like drugs or, you know, and that whole sort of thing. So I've, I've watched millions and millions of these episodes and it is really good because it's so real. You know, I am sure it's America. I'm sure there's some production where, you know, they have the detective saying some like, you know, you know, some stuff about ad breaks and stuff. But it's really good for people that want to write about police, I guess. You know, I guess from my point of view, the police awesome. are there, but not the you know they're not the main characters yeah well sp- speaking of the world that you created here i mean this this world is going it's going to shock some people this world yeah you know the the standard sort of you know i always think of like the uh, the, the average crime reader you know will read up from a lot of different places but this is such a standout 
um, and you. and unique take on this that um, I think you know because it certainly grabbed me this this world um, and it it was all refined down to the very small details for me you know like um, for example uh, the fragrance being pumped through the the castle yeah, yeah. yeah. do you yeah. have uh, uh, the yeah. Paca Ravan in question. I, I, my brother had it, you know, and I did not like it at all. You know, I used to, I used to tell him that this is, just, you know, this is just like luxury air freshener. It was just so strong, and like, I'm like, I know what I'm going to do with it. So, you know, my brother hasn't read it. You know, he hasn't read my book. Which is not right. And when he does, he would know that's for him. <laughs> that, really? <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah. So it's, that's it's, a little, a little like uh, Easter egg nod to your brother. Yeah, for, that, to my brother, because I know he's never going to read it. He's never going to read it. He's never going to listen to it. But when he eventually does, he'll be like, oh, are you little shite. But, you know. It, you know what's it, going to happen is that somebody else who knows him is going to read that and go, I can't believe you. Are you still speaking to your brother? Because I can't believe you <laughs> get away with that. And then he's going to have to read it. And then he's going to have to come and stand in front of you and go, it's taken me this long to read it, but you're still exactly. in the shit. <laughs> it, was that, it was that. And that but the, the book, in that moment in the book, when the Paco Rabanne is mentioned, I think it's literally three pages before you'd mentioned about um, Pretty Boy standing on a needle on the floor of a crack house. You know, yeah. like in like just plain sight you know this house being in plain sight it's just astonishing that and it's a journey through this world yeah and, and uh, how was your research period on this uh, my research period was yeah going into places like that you know with kind of thing i i sort of had a friend that had a friend and so i would go unfortunately i guess fortunately luckily for me i, I you know i don't you know i don't i don't use any of these things so you, you but I didn't want to look to him as like a voyeur, but I would go in, do you know what I mean? Just try and be as cool. Even the whole, do you have anything, you know, the the, the girl that was pregnant that approaches pretty yeah. boy. To, yeah, and that sort of happened to me in a situation. I felt so sad. I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Like, this, is, this is tough. You know what I mean? And I think places like that, you sort of go once or twice and you just, you don't want to go back and you sort of, and then, but it stays with you. And then as, as authors, we then have the ability to, you know, because we, we've seen it real, right? So we can put in what we want to put in and, and still keep it on a level of reality. And yeah, so, yeah, so that was that. And I think, I think that's the only one per se, per se that I, I did go into because that, you know, I felt, okay, I've seen it in the movies. It's never, it's never how it is. You know, yeah. you know, kind of thing. It, it never is, you know, especially when in London. So I just thought, okay, you know, do you know somebody? Like, yeah, I know somebody. Like, oh, let's go in, you know. And I, I'm weirdly, I did tell him that, you know, I, this is what I was doing it for. And you know, he was cool with it. He just said, don't say anything. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go yeah. in, you know, just, you know, and don't, don't, you know, don't talk like, you know, your middle class self. Just shut up. Otherwise, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and then just like, sit, you know. So it was. So I just sat down. Just lay down. Just lay down and walk through. Exactly. Just you know, don't don't and most of all, don't make don't get eye contact with anybody. Don't do it, man. You know that's, I mean? and, so and, that's what, what, what like that scene because when I was reading it, I was like, this is so vivid to me. It's because you actually went went. To yeah, that. I actually went. And, <laughs> and the thing about the needles was like there was some on the floor. It wasn't that dark, so you could sort of see. And I'm thinking, oh my god, do you know what I mean? Like, oh my god. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, that's like that's scary, and you know, with I still know where the house is. Um, I haven't been there for for ages. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that you know it's not the place. But I, you know, I can imagine I can just try. I don't I don't live that close there. Anyway. I can I just drive by and see if you do build, the entire place again gentrified? So I, I suppose not. But yeah, yeah. And it was the what weird thing was that it was the street it was wasn't decrepit or anything. It yeah. was just that house. You but that was like uh, I used to live in um, Camden, um, sort of right, sort of cent central in central ish in Camden, and uh, I, I lived in a house that was sort of above a, a shop, or a flat that was above a shop, and and our neighbours off the back that were technically on the the block behind us, yeah, that was a that was a crack house, but uh, we shared a we shared a, 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 a roof garden, and you know yeah. like. That's mad. It, it, you know, it's we'd be out there being like, right, we're having pints and you know, playing guitar and being middle class twats, and, <laughs> and then they're going, we're shooting up, we're fine. 
And you're like, yeah, 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 no problem. Yeah. Yeah. And and as you say, it's not like, you know, there's a big signpost. And sometimes every now and then you'd get people knocking on the wrong door and being like, blowjobs for crack. And you're like, no. (laughs) uh, Wrong door. Wrong door, mate. Wrong door, just the other one. (laughs) Yeah, but that's Camden 100%. But it's like every street. And then, you know, two doors down is a family with young kids who are going to the. Montessori, this is the crazy and, dichotomy, you know, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 and the thing about the kids is what really got me because we I went there twice. I went there once fairly, like probably in the morning, and I went there once at night because I wanted to see how it was. And like when you when I was leaving and, and just walking, like maybe like you just see a couple of kids just walking past. I'm just thinking, do they know? Yeah, do they know that's what that's there? You know what I mean? Or and I also thought, do your parents know? Because I would think. I would call the police. <laughs> yeah, know, but, yeah, yeah. That's just that's, that's I me, mean, maybe. I mean, I would call the police straight off. But I think it's just one of those things that you just tell your kids, don't, just don't go to that door, sort of thing. Just, yeah. you know, you know, just, just leave don't it. Mind. Don't talk yeah. to them. But yeah, it's, just... it's, that, it's that peeling back. Um, and, you know, like, the great thing is, and what I love doing this when, with my own stuff, is when someone says, no, that's stupid, that would never happen. And then you go, well, I'm afraid, you know, you are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and in that case, you know, like, because it does sound absolutely mad that these places would be just in plain sight, in yeah. buried in the in the day-to-day, you know, in this case, you know, it's not even suburbia, is it? I mean, it's just madness. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, it is madness. And, and you know, but even like, even less than, you know, like I, I live in Stratford, I've lived in a couple of places in Stratford, and I used to live somewhere off Rumford Road. And I can remember like, walking back and my brother was like oh you know that's a that's a crack house and I thought no that's too quiet it looks too quiet and then maybe you know we'd moved and then and then on in the news it was the whole raid and you know police and you know the, the Chris had a, you know the commissioner was there and just like yeah we've, you know we stopped that and I'm like oh wow it was really that was really what it was do you know what I mean and, and it was like a sort of like crack house mixed with a whole house and you know there were a lot of you know women that were there that were, they were forced to do you know so it was like but you know it was just there yeah you know what i mean i just think that, and, and that's another thing why, why i guess i love london or I'm, you know it's kind of weird if i say i love london because of it because these things are happening in the surface but other people's lives are still going on and yeah. they're still doing their own thing and you know not too far away from that i guess you know from stratford you take two three stops in the train in liverpool street or you're you in shortage, you know, and these are just that whole difference of, oh, wow, you know, and this is all happening. And everybody's sort of living their lives, you know, out of balance. I, you know, that's why I like it being such a lot. And that's why I felt that you, know, you can sort of do all those things in London a little bit. You can yeah. move from place to place. And, you know, and even on two- that's why it felt so authentic. But it's also just that um, no matter where you are in London, yeah. you know that you've got, um, that's that is for me the joy of of London more than any other city that I've lived in is that you have got very um, uh, conflicting uh, households living right next door to each other, yeah. and so long as nobody bothers each other, and because nobody talks to each other, <laughs> nobody's bothered. <laughs> <laughs> so you can coexist quite happily so long as yeah. it doesn't get out of hand and i think you know for the police they're aware that if you were to call the police because your kids were walking past a crack house the police would be like yeah we know but at this point in time we, we, this is not what we're going for because there's bigger yeah. fish right in the area yeah. right now and then there's a point at which you go right we can raid because we know the exactly. people in charge are going to be there or they, uh, yeah. uh, otherwise it's just if you're not causing hassle and nobody's spilling out onto the street and yeah I, I, I think this is, you've, touched, you've touched on um the reason why you know i think it's um yes as a because i'm a northern country bumpkin oh, man. <laughs> so when i when i go to london i'm like wow you know I, it's just absolutely mind-boggling and all the people well, yeah, this is it. It's not because of the tall buildings. It's because of the like the scope of life that's going on there. You know, like the huge variety of of life and way of living and people and just and everyone going about their lives in just ways that are, you know, like I was just thinking, you know, while we were talking before about, <laughs> about that, 
um, about what would I do if I knew a, one of my neighbours had a crack house. And yeah, like, no. I, I live just like in a little village with loads of fields, like, and I'm looking out the window, like, is Mavis over there? She got a crack <laughs> there. <laughs> Mavis has probably got one of the biggest marijuana farms. Exactly. This yes. Okay, and this is what really. I'm thinking, plain sight now. You know, I'm yeah. going to be going over like, what the hell have you got going on, Mavis? Yeah, true. <laughs> Just, what, I think, I think it's do is look out next time it snows and see whose house is looking not covered and you'll know who's growing uh, in the roof. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah, what we do in that. That's interesting. That oh, is that interesting. Is, yeah, that is a good one. <laughs> that that is good. good. Driving along with the with the 19 year old, I went, oh God, they haven't got uh, good loft insulation. The last night when <laughs> while they're growing in the roof, you're like, oh yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so naive. Oh, wow. I <laughs> know. <laughs> oh my God, those are things you don't even see. I never even thought about that. And I'm going to use it. I'm going to see that. Absolutely. Going to see it because it's, it's just something you just don't, you know, and it's so obvious now when you think about it. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you can get away with that in London because the snow never settles. In the Peak District, you're an idiot because the snow. <laughs> yeah, the one, the one snowless one house rooftop. That you're like, your ventilation is not that bad. Maybe <laughs> the eye goes off. <laughs> oh my god, that is so true. <laughs> oh god, um, that, but, and I think it's those things that um, are so great for us as readers isn't it you know like those little nuggets of truth that are thrown in there um yeah. that are uh, enlightening and frightening all at the same time um and I, I love how you mentioned there um I mean, that it's like um because that's the impression i've always got from when i've heard you speak about it is is that this really is kind of a love letter to london in a way yeah um but like a warts and all love letter you know yeah. like this yeah. is what it's like you know but yeah love it, and i yeah. love it kind of thing yeah, yeah. this is what but it's london like london doesn't I mean, want it. flowers does it no. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. You, you know, especially because when I first came here, you know, I came here as a, as a for university, and so there was always a perception that I was there was always that expectation of perception that I was going to go back, you know. And so the first few years I was like a visitor, just thinking, oh, that's cool, that's different, all right, you know. And then just thinking, that's never going to be me, or that's never going to be, you know what I mean. And then after university, and you know, I decided to stay, and you know, the more I stayed, you know. I just loved it, you know, and I, you know, I have a child now, you know, my wife is a Londoner, born and bred, so it's like, no, this is us, and this is me now, you know what I mean? Like, even my, even my Nigerian friend, you know, I don't even know how, because, you know, I've been in Nigeria for as much time as I've been in Lagos now, so it's, as I've been in London now, so it's like, you know, it's like, I absolutely love the town, and, you know, I think it's a bit of a weird one for me, because, I guess, I don't know how it worked as my first novel, but every other idea I have either happens in London or in Nigeria. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> you know, yeah, am I going to be, you know, maybe when I move or maybe when I, you know, I, I started in Edinburgh, I did my master's in Edinburgh for a year and a half. But, you know what I mean? I, I don't, I don't, you know, I, I don't know how authentic it'll be right, writing about, or writing something set in Edinburgh. But yeah, so I think it's going to be London and or Lagos for me, you know, so. Yeah, that, cool. that is that is. You you um you you mentioned there um actually sorry you mentioned earlier you've you've triggered something here in my mind here about um, that about the 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 plan of three books that you've got. Yeah. Now I mean, is it all right to ask if will we you know uh, will we see those books? You know, we're like yeah. it's number two. Uh, so yeah, I know you've done number two. So um, is the deal done? But we can you know. So many yeah. fans of yours, we can pop the set, the champagne cord. Yeah, I know. <laughs> they've, really, you know they've released a template for it, you know, Pretty Boy, book two. Oh, you know. Oh, really? Of, I'm still, yeah, I'm still thinking of a title. <laughs> you know, I've sort of like, you know, pigeonholed myself by calling it Good Day. So it has to be a, a month. A month has to be in the title because, you know, ah. it happens in a month. You know, oh. so the first book happens in a day. The second yes. book happens in a month that has the day in it. So you meet like certain characters that, I guess die or whatever in the first book you meet them again and then the third book takes, takes place in a year that has the month and the day in it so and it's like different levels of you know of crime this first one as you as, as we've sort of like spoken about without speaking about it's like that street level thing yeah you walk into crack houses that like sort of like ground level you know what i mean where where the heat is and then the second one is a bit more elevated it's, it's not the people that would walk into the crack houses it's the people that that tell people to walk into the crowd house, yes. that, you know, and that, and then the third one is a higher level of people that you have no idea are involved in crime, politicians, oh. 
yeah that is so it's such an inspired take um, and it really is and and this is um and and what uh you know from a publisher standpoint get it that is so such a brilliant structure um for for a series and we've got a lovely question here from um the brilliant helene kissed hiya helene uh always good to chat with helene um and uh yeah she's asked um how did uh Amen, come up with, or can you tell us more about the concept of book one? And she's put day slash lower level versus book two, month slash mid level gangsters versus book three, year slash top gangsters. Um, he mentioned it at Bay Tales, and I thought that was genius. Those are her words. Thank you very much. So, yeah, yeah so how did you come up with it? I, I, I thought, you know, you sort of, because when you start, with, with with the ground and, and you sort of see how it how it really is you know what i mean i you know there's that whole thing of people that read the second one might not have read the first one like I, like with you i started with <laughs> and you know and yeah, oh, like, sort of, you know kind of thing so you know what I mean? but you know you, you sort of like construct it in a way that you know people you know without drawing back too much so you know i like the idea of like you know making the first one like very visceral very like in your face grimy and it's like so that's the constant like you know and I, and I thought something that happens in that level, you know what I mean, is going to mean a lot to somebody. But then when you're at the higher level, you know, you're in charge of people that die, you're in charge of people that do, you know, so it's all these things, it has to be a bigger scope for you, for you, for us to see how it's really going to affect you, you know what I mean? And it, so it's that sort of thing. And it's following Pretty Boy, essentially, as he rises through the ranks of the first one, he's a street, he's in the street level. The second one, he's at that, you know, middle management thing and on all this at all these things he's not doing it because he wants to do it he's doing it because he has to he's doing it because that's what the challenge he faces and you know and just seeing exactly how one simple situation that happens in the first book affects everybody all through the line and even affects you know owners of shipping companies and owners of you know what i mean all these sort of things that just happen and and that's what you're going to see in the third one you know and it's sort of like luckily for me I'm in the sort of, my day job is, you know, I'm quite a corporate lawyer. So these are the people you sort of deal with. And, you know, so they're looking at things in a very different scope and you sort of know what really affects them. And, and that's sort of how I make it. And so, yeah, it's it's going to be fun. You know what I mean? I, I like it. The third one, you know, as you say, I have tons of notes of it and then we see how it goes. But yeah, it's, I like that idea. And I also like, it's, it's the whole thing from The Wire, the television show of, you know, the characters remain the same, but they sort of focus on different things yeah. each season, you know, the, you know, whether it's the education system or it's politics or, you know, the first one is the really, you know, street level, the wire bit. And then, but then it focus on kids and all this stuff, but that, that's sort of, sort of thing of just realizing that, yes, it's crime, but it sort of affects every level, you know, yeah. what I mean? going up that scale. And, you know, and I also just wanted to, you know, because the first one, the, a lot of them, um, minority characters because i find in those crack houses uh, on the street these are the people that are doing the the operation now when you move up it starts to get less and less diverse just because of what it is and then when you get to the third one you're dealing with people that are so far away in terms of mentality and stuff from the people on the ground but they what they do affects those people and so that's why you just sort of been you already have the affection for Pretty Boy and the other characters that you've met in the first one, you see how, oh, wow, these things matter. You know what I mean? These things ultimately matter. And then you're either rooting for Pretty Boy or you're not, you know what I mean? You're, you're probably going to root for him because I'm right. Yeah. It, you know, <laughs> but I'm excited kind of to but... see how you're going to integrate Pretty Boy into those stories and situations. I'm, I'm buzzing. Yeah. But yeah. It's yeah. like taking, it's like, um, it's like, uh, it's like taking the ripples backwards to the yeah. the drop of the yeah. of the stone, isn't it? Yeah, you know, it's, yeah. Uh, exactly. That, that's sort of that's sort of how. And and uh, as you see, you see the, the the one that happens immediately is is immediate. That's that's the day. But then it takes a while to get to those people. It takes, yeah. It's going to take a while. And then when it gets to them, usually if it gets to them, the waves are much bigger. But it's such and a fantastic then, um, and incredibly subtle. And unless people interview you and talk about it they won't necessarily notice it <laughs> um commentary on not just british social structure but social structure globally 
as yeah. we become a more global and united you know that that um the poverty levels that uh, that happen in in day one versus month versus you know there's it, yeah. there seems to be a sort of elite cloud yeah exactly exactly it's very thin yeah. and um and and uh, people are disposable at that bottom level and exactly that, thank you that's yeah, the word yeah will yeah. be an absolute yeah triumph yeah. it's like numbers on a spreadsheet isn't it people yeah. at that level isn't it just shift them around on the you know into yeah I, I, honestly that's precisely what i want you to feel but you already know those numbers and spread you know them and in some yeah. cases you've already you've already seen them die because you know the, the way it's laid up laid out right so you don't understand that oh this is, this is what this dude that just really has no consequences just, it's just a business deal it's just a you know and that thing that he did is what has just like really affected everybody and then so you so that whole thing is, is sort of how it happens and and at the center of it, you have this reluctant person that you know doesn't want to keep growing but he's going to keep rising right he's going to because he's going to get to that level somewhere or the other to be able to confront them and and do what needs to be done but even in that whole sort of thing you know there's a there's a quote in in you know that you don't kill certain people do you know some people you don't kill them and and that's the battle. Some characters that you know, you you know that you haven't met. That's that's the battle. Like you can't, no matter how angry you are at them, if you kill them, your world turns upside down. You know what I mean? There's just some people yeah. that are just on a different level from you, and they might anger you. But you have to find another way of dealing with them because they come with a lot of political pressure. They come with a lot of international pressure. They come with a lot of stuff because what well, they pissed you off or some nonsense. Do you know what I mean? So you can be a gangster up to a level. Um, it's that mutually assured destruction. So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it is. Yeah. He's talking about quite a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. yeah. Kind of pressure. Uh, <laughs> but it is that. And I think I what I love about it is that um, by doing it in day, month, uh, year format rather than the other way around, is you've sort of circumnavigated anybody doing... Um, any kind of I think not even uh, like sympathy for the underdog you get yeah. what the underdog must rise and even yeah. if the underdog doesn't want to rise yeah. he's gonna have to rise he's gonna have to rise exactly or he's gonna die yeah. oh I'm yeah, so exactly. excited because I didn't think about yeah, it in those exactly. terms oh yeah yeah that's pretty much how I have it because even the, the last you know the last words of of the second book of that essentially just like oh my god because he thinks it's done walking away but like oh my god no and it's even worse now because yeah, it's, you know it's, oh it's, man what, yeah, so it, when it, is book two worse. coming again in february next year <laughs> february next year no that, that's <laughs> yeah. great i know yeah yes yeah. so uh no come on rob cool your jets um uh, that, uh, there's one just because oh, I've got a couple of other questions I wanted to ask you um, but I, I just I wanted to mention I'm holding the book here I know, yeah I wanted to mention um, the brilliant um, chapter headings um, oh, yeah. <laughs> this this is so great because it's we, we don't have chapter numbers listeners we have the time and a line from the chapter and yeah. it's just it felt so it feels so like fresh and ace but like in a like i remember reading like old um american crime novels that had that kind of vibe to it you know yeah. and it keeps you right on the pulse the whole time and it actually you know for a thicko like me it really helped me follow <laughs> like, <laughs> you know the the chronology and the timings of everything you know what it felt like to me it was um uh and you're probably too young rob but um, back in the day when you had um, albums and you'd get the uh, the title and the lyrics oh. printed somewhere. Oh, yes. oh yeah. I do remember that. It. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. it reminded me of that. It was like, right, well, I'm, I'm coming to this later in the chapter. I've, I've got my title. Yeah. No, we're yeah. okay. Cry yeah. wolf. The great thing was <laughs> as well, that, you know, if I if I ever thought, you know, because it moves so quickly, I was like, oh, hang on a minute, you know, when did that? And I could just go back and check the time. Like, yes, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, it's yeah. really great. Yeah. I really liked yeah. it. I really liked yeah. it. I mean, it was, it was so much to enjoy about it. Um, right. one one question that I know that our listeners do love to hear is about the how you became a writer. I mean, obviously, I know yeah. that you've got the uh your your day job as well, and juggling yeah. that must be just heck of an undertaking. With a, yeah. with a young one as well. Poor. I know. It's, it, you know, I'm a bit of a, well, my, my wife calls me a hippie. It's like, everything is fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, kind of like everything is, everything is smooth. And 
if you want it, because I, I wanted the book. I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to no, know. I wanted my son. So it's like, I wanted it all. So it's like, it's yeah. not going to be daunting. I'm just going to make it work. That is the cool, I mean? Honestly, um, that is the coolest thing I've ever heard, I think. You know? Yeah, so, it, yeah, so it's, there's no stress. It's just like, you know, we'll make it work. You know what I mean? Like, and we are making it work. And, and, and it's awesome. And yeah. And I think my wife pushed back against that for a bit. Like, oh my God, like, it is stress. It's like, yeah, it's not really. And now she's like, okay, yeah. You know what I mean? Because it, it'll work. It'll work somehow. You know what I mean? Like, even writing the second book, I was taking so, so long to get it started. But I was like, I was having so much fun, you know, being with my son when he was growing up. And I was like, you know what I mean? And I knew I was going to suffer for it. I knew I was going to spend, you know, sleepless nights writing, writing it. But it's just like, you know what I mean? It's worth it. And even... Yeah, but you know, you can write your second book anytime. Your son's yeah. only a baby once. Yeah. yeah. Like, exactly. you have that time. Then the words will come. Then after. <laughs> yeah. And also, so that's what I just thought, you know, you just prioritize things and... You know, it, it's, it's always just working wonderfully. And, you know, even the law firm at Matt is, um, yes, it's, you know, it's tough and it's prestigious, but they're one of those that that believe in the work-life balance sort of thing. So, you know, I'm usually done with like seven-ish, you know what I mean? So it, it's it's all good, you know what I mean? I, I am so lucky, cool. you know, I'm in, I'm in a good position, so it's never going to be a problem. It's never going to be anything I'm going to lose sleep over. It's like, it's, it's what I've dreamt of. I have it now, so. Not going to complain. That, that's, I mean, honestly, I wish, I just think that that mindset and that outlook is to be applauded and shared with everybody. I think seriously, that's like, everyone's got to hear that, you know, because it, it, you can, you can complain so easily, can't you? You know, and it's a, it's an absolute blessing what we do, isn't it? You know, yeah. so yeah, yeah. so yeah. You, you're so right. I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, so you, you'd, you, you'd written A Good Day to Die. And yeah. so how did that come to? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I suppose I, so I, I, I wrote it and then I, I went on the internet trying to find agents and I thought, you know, I'm going to be one of these ones that's just going to pick, you know. <laughs> I, you know, I, I came from the sort of position where I thought, okay, I have a job, you know what I mean? I want to pursue this and I want to do it right, you know what I mean? So I thought, okay, you know, I'm just going to, so I went on there, I, I looked at the people that I thought, you know, I get along with agents, I get along with, and I sent it off. And then I think I could have sent it off and just thinking, okay, two weeks, right? <laughs> Let's see what comes up. And the next day I got an email from Anthony, you know, at Green Heat and my Anthony Copper, my my agent. And he was like, oh, he loves it. I was like, oh, this, this seems weird. Like, this, this, this doesn't really happen like this, is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know I mean? I'm like, uh, a day later, is, no. I know. Yeah. This is these good vibes you're putting out there, there, Abby. You, know? you know, this is you was, made this happen. My God, it was so weird, you know. What I mean? And then, yeah, and then we, we spoke, and then we met, and then it it was good. And then, so he then he sort of like we we sort of redid the book a little bit. There's some things he wanted to remove, or some things, you know, like you see, that was fun. You know what I mean? Because you know, I you know I started in Nigeria, so you, you listen first. You know what I mean? Because he's the one with, you know, with the expertise, he's the one that has, you know, so it's like, you know, whatever you want to, my default is I'll try and make it work. And if I can't, I'm like, listen, I don't think so. But the first reaction for me is to try and make it work. So we, we did all of it. And then I was happy with the end product. And then we sent it off. And then I can make him send it off. And then a few days later, I was like, oh, we're far back from Quarkus. I'm like, oh, okay. You know what I mean? And, and, and it sort of sort of happened and you know i met steph you know and i really like steph and we really got on and yeah and everything has just sort of like moved you know fantastically moved swimmingly and then you know what i mean yeah. so it's you know it's a bit of a difficult one like you know i have people that ask me about oh you know how do how do i do it especially you know they, they, they always mention the i guess the elephant in the room of you know me being black or you know you know, so you, you go, and it's the same with with my law firm. And I think I think I'm, I think we're only two black dudes, or maybe I'm the only one. So, so I always get that question as well, and I always just, you know, what I mean, like I wasn't thinking about that when I, when I, you know, when I yeah. applied to the job or when I yeah. sent it off. Like, you know, I think I try to make it the best thing I could, and then you sort of like let the chips fall where they may, and then you know what I always say to people is like, you know. The, the only difference between you, Rob, and me, like when you send something off, when you get a no, 
you might know I yeah it's, it's maybe it needs to it needs to work for black people that I you might think oh do they don't like it because I'm black and I think so my thing is I just I just remove that that little bit yeah no I just remove it you know what I mean I can't help it I can't there's nothing I can do about it yeah yeah so just try and make it a, just keep pushing because it's difficult yes luckily for me it, it took forever but then again this is a story that I said has been in my head forever so yeah I've yeah. probably written it dozens and dozens and dozens of times yeah. but it probably wasn't ready that, that first time so it's like I always tell people it's just like I don't know what to tell you apart from just persevere just keep yeah. going just keep persistent keep persistent keep persistent and then maybe when you make when you pull that trigger everything is ready yeah, you know yeah. I mean? as, 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 it, as it sort of worked for me when I pulled the trigger and I sent it everything was sort of lined up because it was like okay I spent so long on it I had even I had written it written it and it all just sort of worked I think you can rush it do you know what I mean because it's like you want you want it so much and that's that's to show you how hard it is to get so yes yeah, just you know what I mean be prepared, be prepared for, to, for it to be hard you know what I mean that's yeah. a really important thing um that you know that you that you touch on there is that there there are gatekeepers and uh, in publishing specifically and and in agenting and everything else and it is a predominantly white male middle class yeah. area but that being said if you have a story that is told authentically and told in your voice and is your passion it will rise and uh, I think what people need to understand more about publishing is that it doesn't matter if you're working class, it doesn't matter if you haven't achieved a single GCSE, it doesn't matter if you are black or if you're Asian or if you're disabled or if you're anything else. What matters is, have you told the story to the full of the story? And will everybody buy it? Will everybody believe it? Not buy it as in spend their money, but yeah. buy it as in, uh, as in invest in it. And that will make publishers sit up either way. Of course, publishers are always going to be shy of anything outside the mainstream. It's yeah. just, it's a, it's a fucking world we have to fight with. As a publisher yeah. myself, I can see I'll take voices from anywhere and when I try and sell voices from anywhere to the mainstream, the mainstream goes, <laughs> sure about this. That's kind of a nice no. little Michael Jackson you had going on there. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like to channel my <laughs> uh, well, I, 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 I do know what you mean. I, I think the um, work, uh, our work collectively has to stand on its own merits, hasn't it? You yeah. know, and um, if the work is great, the work is great, you know, and if, if something really exciting and fresh um, and urgently grabbing is going on um yeah I, I just want to follow that all the way all the way through Especially when everybody know. dies in one day yeah. <laughs> yes yes yeah <laughs> yeah why but not? no and, and it's <laughs> it is fascinating and i do i do love to see um chances get taken um by those in in positions to make decisions you know yeah. it's one of the reasons I, I like working with sean you know sean uh, in his capacity as publisher he's looking like <laughs> he's not sure about that but his, his willingness to give bad. an outlet for voices from everywhere is one of the reasons yeah. that I really like that. You know, yeah, you have to because uh, I I think I came from a place of frustration myself with the publishing industry that you know like wow well, you know, we really love it and we really love your writing we really love this um, but I don't think we get we haven't got a market to sell it in and you know. But there are going to be hundreds of people, and may yeah. not thousands, may not hundreds of thousands. I know everybody's looking for the bestseller, but if a hundred people read a book that speaks to them, that's a yeah. that's a fucking huge that, number of people that have read a book that speaks to them. It <laughs> is, it is, and the, and the fact that that book has has been given a chance upon will will open another doorway for yeah. more readers to, and writers to come through. Yeah. Um, at the same uh, event I saw you at, uh, Amen, was uh, Nikki May. Um, yeah. And she was just, oh, she was so much fun. She was so cool. But she yeah. was saying about how people had, had come up to her and said, you know, thank you for writing this book, you know, because I felt like, um, like people I knew was in it. You know, that kind yeah. of thing. And mm. anything that attracts readers and attracts people to writing and things like that means we're going to be a more enriched enriched community uh, yeah. we're going to be a, a better represented community um in terms of 
all the different kinds of stories that human beings want to tell, you know? And um, yeah, I just love it. I just love it. And I like the fact that the industry is, is sort of in the hang of this a little bit oh you know it's going yeah. ah yes yes this yeah. they're onto something these people <laughs> you know? I, I absolutely love the 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 total leveler of it doesn't matter where you come from yeah what your class race creed color is if we want to we all just kill people in our books yes yes that's oh, true yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. I I'm know. sorry but they all die really horrible and people look at us all a bit funny it's, it's, it's so, just yeah. really nice yeah I know it's awesome well, it, 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 we, we, we talked to um, Nadine Matheson uh, yes. quite a while ago now and she said we were like what what prompted you to write the book and she's like well you know she's a barrister she's, she spends her time in court She's she spends her time looking at people um and and talking to police and she's like i see a lot of black faces uh just not in books yeah so uh, in my day life that all of the criminals all of the barristers all of the, yeah. <laughs> but uh but not in the books so i thought i'd write yeah. some you're like yep yeah. yeah, looking good reason That's yeah <laughs> and she she's another another cool customer nadine yeah, yeah she's yeah, great she kills people good too yeah she I really know. really <laughs> does yeah um uh, uh, right. Uh, I mean, we, we have, I've got, to, I've got, I'm going to throw one extra question in Sean, if that's Three okay. Minutes. Three minutes. I know I'm going to have to rifle through this. Um, so I mean, I know you've done sc- some screenwriting in your background yeah. as well. Yeah. So, um, oh gosh, well, so when you come back for book two to discuss yeah. book two, because absolutely, please forgive me, me, I'm going to have to please, book you please, right please, away. Please, please. Yeah, <laughs> Thank yeah. you. And uh, yes, already. Yeah. Yes, awesome. Done. Awesome. Done yeah. deal. March next year. Yeah. 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 You got it, man. Well, again, I'll go through four things. <laughs> yeah, right, we'll, just, we'll just do it straight. Forward, yeah. yeah. We'll back yeah. to back it. And then can we book, yeah, you for exactly. book three the year after as well? Exactly. I'm, right. I'm here. I'm always here. It would be lovely to announce that he's been coming on to Blood Brothers to talk about book three before they'd signed book three. Uh, that be or book five. We're like, right, we, uh, we've got him booked in for yeah, 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 twenty-seven. To Why talk not? About Why five. not? So, um, I I wanted to ask you, uh, top of your head, um, who is uh, directing the movie adaptation of A Good Day Tonight, and who, oh. you're you're obviously doing the screenplay. So, yeah. um, <laughs> and uh, who who is playing Pretty Boy? Who is playing Pretty Boy? That um, Damson Idris. Yeah, from Snowfall. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I'll yeah. go for Dancing Idris. Like and, it, and I'm probably we can go for Quentin. Let's get, let's give, let's give Tarantino a go. Come on. Oh, okay. he would he love. Does, he you have to get this in quick. your hand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So in his hand, you have to get this in his hand. Yeah, let's let's, let's give let's, let's let's have Prince Harry do that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I inspired I, shout and Dancing Idris is brilliant. The shout. That may come. Yeah, love it. Right. I mean, obviously, because we know they're both great listeners of the podcast. So I know. <laughs> How you I know, I know. So you know, you guys, you're going to have to come through us. I'm afraid. So if you yeah. want to get to Armin here, um, what are you reading at the minute, though, Armin? Um, I'm finishing. You know, a good friend of mine, Rob's book, and the enemies. And <laughs> Thanks, man. I am currently reading a lot of case law. <laughs> oh, really? really? Oh yeah. man. Yeah, but yeah, but. But that that's what I'm doing. And I'm and I think I, I I just finished but then I I enjoy reading nonfiction. So I just finished some other Trump book and halfway through I just thought, why am I doing this? You know what I mean? After a while, it's all the same nonsense. I'm sorry, you know what I mean? I don't we're not gonna talk politics, but you know, it's just something I grew up with. <laughs> there were always, yeah. you know, political books growing up about and the worst thing is that my, my dad is <laughs> my dad is, you know, a democrat or you know or i guess you about all the books in the house were all about bush and about bronze about the enemy and i just know your, your enemy your enemy closer yeah, yes exactly. you've got to keep your enemies yeah, yeah, you to. so even <laughs> now I, i'm just fascinated by them but yeah so that, that's i just finished reading one of the trump i don't even care about it i just after a while i just started to this is getting monotonous now you, you, you're so honestly you're so right though i i'm looking at my shelf over there with a couple of trump trump books on it and yeah. no other politicians are on there. Yeah. <laughs> There's no other politician political you know I mean? books there. Yeah, I'm sure if I go into place and I see a Tony Blair book, I like Tony Blair, but I just wouldn't mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't want to read that. I, w- I want to get wound up. Yeah, <laughs> I want to get, get angry. Is the one about, what about Boris? Is the one about Boris? Is the one about Boris? <laughs> oh my God, can you imagine? <laughs> Boris, oh, Does it come with its own clown car? I know, that'd be awesome. I can't wait for that one. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, there'll be some good ones there. Yeah. Um, also, uh, Sean, what about you? What have you been reading? Oh, I, I said it last week, and I'll say it again. I'm still reading submissions for the Gone anthology. We uh, we we passed 130 submissions now. Um, oh, wow. We're doing uh, in the publishing uh, company that I run. We're doing an anthology of crime writers, uh, short stories, but they're coming from all over. Um, and this some... was the furthest place that that's the one has come from. Uh, we've got we've got a crap load from the states, to be fair. Oh, right. really? um, uh, and you do like states. a bit of the red dog over there, you know? I know they do. And we <laughs> we got people who are like, oh, so um, you know, I've co-written a couple of books with Stephen King, um, and <laughs> and so and here's a, and you're like, yeah, I mean, we'll have a read, see if it's yeah, why not. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, so the guy, one of our authors, uh, Steve Golds, is editing, and he and he's like, he sends me emails of a weekend. I got my god, so and so has got it, and you're like, oh, that's cool, really Steve. Good. This weekend, man. <laughs> oh, that's, that's so, so, yeah, so exciting! Yeah, I can't I'm, I'm wait to see you in this. But even like, this is my first short short story. This is my first submission authors. Some of them are spectacular so oh, that's we're trying to whittle it to 25 in the anthology wow oh, that'd be good oh, so over 100 people that. are gonna get the oh man yeah we're well over 100 i mean when we're, we're not even a month into the submissions the two month submission window so well over 100 are, are already going to get the Thanks, but no thanks. But, oh my uh, god! Because yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm working on mine in a minute. I'm really nervous about it. <laughs> Seriously, better nervous get it right. Better get it right, otherwise it's not going to get got. I know, I know, I know. Oh man. Uh, well, um, very much looking forward to that one, Sean. Uh, I yeah, myself yeah, um, I'm reading uh, "Running Out of Road" by um, Kath Staincliffe. and okay. this she is just great. You know, I, I think she's um, an icon. Um, but I think she's one of the classiest cl- crime writers around, but she includes such human qualities in these books that really, oh, they're just, I, I can relate so fiercely to the small human touches that it pulls me in so fiercely. Um, and this is um, a bit of a, a sidestep for her as well, for taking her books out of a more urban setting and putting them in the Derbyshire Peak Districts. Um, so it's it's really really great. Okay. Running out of road yeah. is a super do, super do, yeah, super yeah. do, super duper book. Super duper, know. yeah, you got it. Yeah, got thank it. you. Yeah, worry, yeah. <laughs> Someone's got to keep it. this train on the tracks. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Uh, uh, Armin, it's been great to hang out with you tonight. Thanks thank so much you for so your much. time. It's Thanks been a pleasure. So thank, thank you, so and um, and keep writing that uh, stunning trilogy because thank you. Yeah, man. I cannot just wait to see where we're going. Uh, listeners, a good day to die is out now. Go get it and. Um, Buckle up, <laughs> just buckle up yeah. tight. Seriously, good uh, day to read a good day to die, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> um, that's a good care, one. Gang. Good day good to read to a good day you. to die. Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks for so having me. Bye. Bye. Are you a Bond fan? I mean, really. A Bond fan. If you enjoy dreaming of what 1991 and 1993 Tim Dalton films would have looked like, or if you have a degree in Octopussy but still don't know which Fabergé egg is a fake, then the Really 007 podcast is for you. Really 007. We bring an insightful, critical, and silly take on the James Bond films. We are proudly part of the Pod Dojo Network and are available for free on iTunes and Spotify. We have regular, in-depth reviews of every Bond film, as well as special episodes on different aspects of the series. And some of us are a bit down on the Craig era. Robert. While others are happy to pretend to dislike things just to get cheap laughs. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook and join in on the James Bond conversation online. Really, Double Seven.